Hello guys, my Massey 8680 upgrade is going pretty well, so I thought I'd better start on the upgrade of this Scania R620. At the minute it's working off a 7.4 volt battery, but I want to try and get it to work off 3.7 so that it's the same as all the other tractors and all the other trailers. If all the vehicles are running off the same voltage, I'll be able to just hook up one of the tractor trailers to the back of the lorry and connect the wires up and use the battery in the trailer. Similarly if I wanted to tow say the lorry half pipe behind uh, one of the tractors it'll be the same battery, I'll just have to wire it up, no problem, everything will work the same with the same controls, same code and then uh, just make things a lot simpler. I'm not sure if this TB6612 motor driver will be able to drive the motor in this with 3.7 volts so that's what we're going to check out today if uh, this motor can be driven with this motor driver. It's been a long time since I've actually done this conversion so I'll just have to uh, try and see what I can remove out of this because at 7.4 volts I probably have a voltage regulator in here somewhere that's not needed anymore. If, if we can drive it to 3.7 volts we need to check that the motor can be driven first with the 3.7 but if it can that should make things a lot simpler. Uh, you can see in here we have the motor driver and actually looks like a voltage regulator as well so the motor driver is stuck in here so that's the voltage regulator it's um, 6 volts oh I must have I must have regulated this voltage to 6 volts for the motor and then put it into the L293D here so I'd say the 6 volts is going through here and it's probably dropping a volt or two down to around about the 3 volts that this motor needs. Now, I, I think that this motor needs. Uh, with this more modern motor driver, we shouldn't have that large voltage drop, I don't think. So that's really what we're testing today, whether this uh, motor driver has a low enough voltage drop that uh, we can drive this motor from 3.7 volts. There's another problem with this lorry that the LEDs, a lot of them are set up to work with the 7.4 volts so there might be a couple of LEDs in series which probably won't work with the 3.7 volts. I'll need to kind of uh, reevaluate those, might need to change resistor values or I might have to separate the LEDs and put them all in parallel or something like that. So we might see how, how that works out. I, it's highly likely these LEDs at the front aren't going to work with the 3.7 volts. But we'll just uh, overcome that when we get to it. So here's the two wires for the motor. Uh, they're the ones that we're going to need for this little experiment. Uh, I think what I'll do is just solder a bit of wire on to make them a bit longer. So that we can put something on the top of the lorry here. Uh, well, put a bit of uh, breadboard or something, something like this, on top of the lorry here. Set up our motor driver and just see how it works. I soldered some harder wire onto the end of the motor wires so that it would easily go into the breadboard. And you can see here, if we hook it up to the battery, so it works fine directly from the 3.7 volt battery. So we just need to check now if we're getting a substantial voltage drop when we introduce the motor driver. I have the motor driver now wired up here uh, it's just set up into one direction here and this is the PWM signal so if I hook that up to the positive so now we're going at full speed here so let me just see that is pretty fast so obviously the voltage drop on this motor driver isn't nearly as bad as it was on the old one so at least with no load the lorry is going at a reasonable speed so I think just to be 100% confident I'll uh, load up the low loader and we'll just see if the lorry can pull the low loader with we'll say an excavator or something like that on it something with a reasonable amount of load I just remembered I had this little board from when I done that um, kind of introduction to the NRF24 module and since I still have that wired up seems to half work with my controller even though I've changed the code in the controller I don't seem to have any reverse but uh, 
Yeah, so I've no reverse, but you can see I have reasonable enough control of the lorry. So I have a bit of speed control. Lorry is a good bit faster than the tractors. But you can still get pretty fine motor control with it. So I'm not 100% sure, but hopefully that's full speed. So if we load it up, we should be able to test it with a bit of speed control. All right, well, here's the lorry loaded up with uh, an excavator. Uh, maybe not the heaviest loads, but you see, no problem pulling that. We'll go a bit faster this time. So we clearly have absolutely no problem pulling that load. And we have pretty good slow speed control, which is what you want when you're maneuvering uh, a lorry. So it's pretty ideal really. So it looks like 3.7 volts is going to work absolutely fine for the lorry. So now we need to take a look at the rest of the electronics and see if everything else is going to work with 3.7 volts. So the next thing to check out is the LEDs. So most of them are in the cab itself and all the wires are going to the Arduino which is in the cab so easiest way to do this is to just cut the wires off the Arduino and we can measure them there so we don't need the XB anymore so we can get rid of that for starters First thing we see here is a voltage regulator. I'd assume this is 5 volts. It's not actually a voltage regulator, it appears to be a transistor. So, not 100% sure what the story is there. So, this ball of wires here, this is the Arduino. So, I need to cut all these wires so that I can try them at 3.7 volts and see what kind of current they're drawing and if the lights are actually lighting up enough because uh, it's possible that the that they'll be too dim with 3.7 volts although I'd say a lot of them are possibly running at 5 volts but I'm not 100% certain, we'll just need to test that out uh, I might have another voltage regulator in here, I can't actually remember how I've done this to be honest I think a lot of these things here are um, transistors so I probably want to get rid of those, don't want so many transistors in the new setup uh, hopefully be able to drive most LEDs directly from the Arduino, although a lot of the bigger ones we'll have to add in some uh, transistors. But we'll start by getting rid of these wires first anyway, or getting rid of the Arduino. You can see when I did this one my soldering skills weren't quite so good. And I didn't desolder the header pins because I was worried I'd, uh, I'd damage the Arduino. As you can see there, we've pretty much used every pin on this Arduino. So obviously we're going to need two Arduinos to do the new system because the NRF24 module will require a lot more pins. So we start picking through these wires here. Uh, that's part of the XB, so we can get rid of that. Another bit of the XB, so that's gone too. That looks like a ground wire. It's an awful mess of wires here. Let's see what's in this. I imagine this is a transistor for something. Here are transistors there. Well, I suppose something simple we could try straight away is just plug the battery in and see what we get with our 3.7 volts. So first thing we can see here is the little detail LEDs, they don't look too bad, they're uh, probably bright enough but uh, all I have to do to brighten them up a little bit if I want is change the resistor, so that's not a big problem. Our switch obviously works no problem as you'd expect, nothing else is lighting up. So I'll just check where my actual power is coming to here, it's coming in here and going to the switch here and then going over here by the look of things. So there's our 3.3 .3 volts according to that. 
So if that's 3.3 volts, either there's a regulator in there somewhere, or my battery is actually amazingly flat to exactly 3.3 volts. Which would be quite strange. Yeah, I can see no other possibility. I don't can't see anything in there that will be dropping the voltage. So let's try a different battery. Hopefully this one will be a little bit better. This is 3.49. Now that might suggest that something is drawing down the voltage somewhere. So we might actually be drawing a huge amount of current in this circuit. So I guess we should check what the current is. If I measure the battery voltage directly, 4.1. So that's pretty definitely charged battery there. So let's measure the current draw. So we only have 60 milliamps being drawn here, so we don't actually have a, a huge amount of current being drawn. So I'm not sure what was pulling down the the voltage on the battery there. Uh, I'm not even entirely sure what is causing this 60 milliamp uh, draw on power. Um, I'll have to delve a little bit deeper into the model and kind of figure out what everything's doing. One thing I just realized, uh, when we powered this up, one of these two LEDs should have lit up. And if I power up the transistor for that, you can see we have one there just about lighting. Just to show you what happens when we put the 7.4 volt battery into this. Note we have an LED lit here. Our lights on the back are lit. And in here, the LCD screen is displaying an image. So, that's all fine. Now we have the 7.4 volt battery hooked up. So, note our LED there. If I connect to this wire, oh, something funny going on there. Well, I don't really know what's going on here. Everything uh, seems to be, or nothing seems to be working as I would have expected. It all just might be a little bit too complicated for what I'm trying to do, that appears to be the LEDs at the front there that doesn't seem to be anything that doesn't seem to do anything <laughs> there's an awful lot of these wires don't seem to do a whole lot well I don't seem to be making much progress here figuring out what anything is so what I think I'll do is just take the cab off and start going through it system by system so I'm going to start with the beacon LEDs Clearly the voltage when I put the 3.7 volt battery in isn't high enough to light the LEDs so I need to sort out the resistors in there. Obviously I was running out of pins with uh, this Arduino so I tried to save pins so the beacons were always on. But now I'm going to wire it like the Massey so each beacon will have its own uh, will have its own pin on the Arduino and they'll just be flashed individually so I need to get the right resistors or I need to get rid of the transistors that I was using and get the right resistors for that then when I've that done I'll work down these lights headlights these larger lights are gonna take some substantial work I'd say Well, as you can see, I've lots of wires and things to sort out, so I think I'll do that in another video. There is one good thing about this model, and that is that all the lights are already on it, so I don't have to go drilling holes and mounting the lights or any of that stuff like I did with the Massey. I can just wire this one up, and it should be good to go. So, although at the minute it looks like there's quite a lot to do, it's probably not quite as bad as some of the other models that I'll have to upgrade. So, if you want to see the rest of this build, make sure and uh, hit the subscribe button. I'll probably start with the cab uh, in the next video and uh, if you have any comments or any suggestions leave them either below or in the forum and I'll do my best to answer them and that's pretty much everything so thanks very much for watching